Alrighty, so today we're going to be talking about the shielding effect and effect of nuclear charge, which affects periodic table trends. Uh, so these are the two main guiding principles for um, why periodic table trends occur the way that they do. So the shielding effect is talking about the fact that as electron shells or orbitals are added, the electrons between a valence electron and the nucleus actually propel those valence electrons. And so what this means is that the attractive force of the nucleus is diminished on the valence electrons by the inner shell electrons. The valence electrons are therefore, uh, therefore do not feel as much of a pull from the nucleus as they should. And this will affect various trends across the periodic table. So kind of an example of what's going on here, you've got the nucleus and you've got inner shell electrons and outer shell electrons. The nucleus is feeling an attraction to those outer shell electrons, but the repulsive um, negative negative interaction between the two electrons kind of counterbalances that attractive force. And so those outer shell electrons don't feel as much of that pull and um, that affects these trends. So this is more of a vertical trend than a horizontal trend as in order to have that inner to outer sh electron shell repulsion, you have to be adding orbitals, not just adding electrons in the same orbital. So this more affects things vertically than it does um, horizontally. Uh, and this will affect different trends in different ways, whether you're talking about ionic radius, atomic radius, um, electron, uh, electronegativity, or ionization energy. Uh, the other one that we're talking about is the effective nuclear charge. And so this is the pull that the valence electrons feel uh, from the nucleus can be calculated as the effective nuclear charge. The difference between the nuclear charge and the effective nuclear charge is the addition of the repulsive inner electrons being taken into account. So that whole shielding effect that we're talking about, this is kind of a way to physically calculate that. Um, the effective nuclear charge is calculated as follows. Uh, the ENC or effective nuclear charge is equal to the charge of the nucleus minus the charge of the inner electrons. So for example, here are um, two graphs or two pictures of chlorine versus magnesium, chlorine having 17 protons and 18 neutrons and uh, 17 electrons, magnesium having 12 protons, 12 neutrons, and 12 electrons. Now we're talking about the valence shell electrons. So when calculating this, the ENC of magnesium is the charge of the nucleus, which is 12 protons, minus the charge of the inner atoms, which is these red atoms right here. So one, or sorry, electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 electrons on the inner atom. So 12 minus 10 is equal to uh, two. So the effective nuclear charge for magnesium is two. Chlorine, on the other hand, has 17 protons and still has 10 inner electrons and seven um, outer electrons. The pull or the effective nuclear charge of chlorine though is 17 minus 10, which gives it seven. Uh, it, because of the larger ENC for chlorine, chlorine pulls those outer electrons in tighter, making the radius smaller. So this is one of the effects that you'll see when we talk about uh, size of atoms. Um, this trend effective nuclear charge is more horizontal than vertical as um, you're adding protons and electrons across the periodic table, but you're not adding orbitals. So we're not seeing that shielding effect issue, um, but we are seeing the proton number increasing, so that um, charge of the nucleus increasing, but we're not actually seeing inner shell, so inner electrons increasing, which is why this is more of a horizontal trend than a vertical trend. So I want you guys to keep these uh, theories and these ideas in mind because we're gonna be talking about them tomorrow um, and the next day when we finish up periodic table trends. Um, uh, in order to describe these trends, we need to know these two terms. Thanks guys.